Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Quick Game API version 0.1, which I just released on GitHub. Quick Game API is basically a game API I am creating for the PSP 2022 Game Jam, also called the Restart Game Jam. And here we go. What is the Quick Game API? So the Quick Game API is a fast, simple, easy to learn game creation API for beginner programmers. The technical details are that it's written in C, it uses the GU to GL wrapper, it is null safe, so passing in null into most of the functions will not cause any undefined behavior, and then it is also well documented. This documentation exists in the header files, and if you read the header files, there is a very good explanation usually for every single uh, function inside of the API. An a quick note on that, I'm also going to be working on getting it uh, sort of auto-documented so that I can actually post that on GitHub IO and you guys can actually see the documentation through that. So what does it look like? Here is the basic C sample. Uh, it's 18 statement lines of code and you don't really need to know anything about the PSP specifics. In fact, there's nothing in here that would indicate that it is a PSP uh, specific API and you could probably read this code in English. It's very human readable. So of course we include quick game and then we set up a main function in C. Uh, this is pretty simple C code. And then we're checking if the game initialization fails, we're gonna return one. Otherwise it means that it succeeded and we can go ahead and do the rest of our calls. The first thing we create here is a quick game texture object and we call it text. And we call a function for a quick game texture load. And this will load this circle.png file. And then it has two options here. The two options are whether you flip it and whether you put it in VRAM. By default, having zeros here makes it false. Quick game sprite here is another quick game object and it's a sprite. So we're gonna create sprite and we'll do sprite create alternative. There are multiple different ways to create a sprite uh, including contained sprites. Uh, but basically this version uh, lets us specify the uh, X and Y position and the size of it. The X and Y position of a sprite is centered in the middle of a sprite. And then we have the, our texture here. So the sprite needs a texture to know what texture to use. We also set the graphics mode to be in 2D and then we enter our main game loop. In our game loop, we say while the game is running, uh, we're gonna start a frame, we're gonna clear the, clear the screen, and then we're going to draw our sprite and then we'll end the frame. And pretty much we're just going to do that at infinitum until uh, the user uh, basically uses the home button callback to get out of it. In this, we can do quick game sprite destroy and quick game texture destroy to destroy our textures and our sprite that we loaded earlier so that we don't leak any memory. And then we terminate the game and return zero, of course. So that was a very quick example of it. Uh, other things that I can do, so it loads textures, you can make sprites, you can make tile maps. Tile maps are basically larger maps of sprites. I don't have an example on this, uh, but it can do that. And then also you can use 2D cameras. So you can, for example, tie it to your button inputs, which is also supported. Uh, what you'll need to do is include the PSP control he uh, header in order for uh, using and pulling the correct inputs. And then there is also 2D collision detection. And there's two forms of it, both the inter intersection test, which you can see over here. Uh, the intersection test over here uh, is showing uh, that they're overlapping and it paints each in a different color. The directional responses depends on which direction a object collides with another object. So whichever side uh, it's hitting. So for example here, this would be on the left side of the red object or the right side of the green object depending on which one was moving. And here's another example of drawing a sprite. We also have C++ bindings that are included. This is 14 statement lines of code, and you'll see that it looks extremely similar to the C code. Uh, a couple notes here are that we have namespaces instead of snake case identifiers. So for example, quick game init is going to be quick game the scope, and then you scoping operator and you hit do init. Quick game graphics, you set to 2D. Uh, and then 
All of the sprite and texture objects are now proper objects, a quick game graphic sprite, sprite. And the constructor is the way that you actually load it. So here is an example uh, where we're setting in the position, 24136, the size, 256 by 256, and then the texture info. This is a contained sprite, so by submitting the texture information to the sprite, the sprite will automatically load the texture for you, and then uh, on object destruction, it will actually free this. Uh, there exists no resource leak here, the destructor handles the destruction. The uh, contained sprites also exist within C as well, uh, but it is obviously packaged much better in C++. And over here, sprite draw is replaced with the object member function for draw for the uh, sprite class, instead of having to be just a global function. So what will also be added before uh, the game jam competition? The things I want to add are audio. I want to add timers. Uh, so audio, playing sounds, playing music. Uh, timers. Timers will be pretty much uh, just useful for animations and timing things. Uh, I'll get into that later. Uh, primitives. We should be able to draw things like colored rectangles, circles, etc. Uh, and then uh, being able to load a tile map from a disk. That could be very useful, for example, loading an entire map that you've already pre-created. And then you could have tile map collision detection so that a... Uh, Sprite, which would be your character, walking through a tile map, would be able to collide with certain objects. We'll also be implementing a Lua interpreter. Uh, this will be pretty simple to add, actually. Uh, and basically, we could also create a visual scripting system using Snap uh, for this as well. It will also have animation support, animation support for both tile maps and sprites to render onto the screen. I also want to improve the C++ bindings. I feel like there's a little bit more that can be documented and cleaned up in the C++ bindings. Uh, and then also ex extensions to existing structures. So adding more methods to things like tile maps and sprites and collision detection, things like that. Uh, for example, contained sprites is a good example of what I mean by an extension. Uh, sprites originally require you to pass in a separate texture, and now you can load the textures in your sprites, and these textures are memory managed by the sprite, and that's hidden behind a flag, essentially. So you can uh, set a flag to make your sprite actually own the texture. So where do I find it, and how do I add it to my project? Uh, this is the link to get it. It's also going to be posted in the description. And to add it to a Git project, you use git submodule add, and then you'll just use the link to the .git. Uh, make sure that when you're cloning it, you're cloning it recursively, so dash dash uh, recursive, uh, because we depend on GU to GL, which is also a submodule of Quick Game. To add it to a CMake file is pretty simple. You'll just do add subdirectory, path to Quick Game, Quick Game. Uh, so basically this defines it as the Quick Game object, and this is the subdirectory. And then link the library to Quick Game, and then include the directory. So setting up the include directory, just path to the include. You can do the equivalent for make as well, where you're just going to uh, have to build Quick Game uh, into a .a file uh, by just using CMake, and then you'll just dash L Quick Game .a, or well, dash L Quick Game. And then you'll also need to do adding dash I to the compiler for the path to the include directory. So will I do tutorials on this? Yes, I do have tutorials planned, and I want to do one on Friday. Uh, that one will be fun, and I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Either way, thank you guys, and have a great day.